My first trip to the Antarctic was uh, 1957. And uh, as part of what was then called Falkland Islands Dependency Survey, now is British Antarctic Survey. It was, for some reason or other, they're saying it was the IPY, but it was in fact the IGY, International Geophysical Year rather than International Polar Year. But whatever, the problems were very different and, and they were more basic science rather than all oh, the world's coming to an end kind of thing. So what you hope is that this international polar year, and we're told, and I think it's right, is that climate change and sustainability again um, is going to have its most profound consequences and strongest signals in the polar regions. So let's hope that it's going to really kickstart people into doing something genuine and real about climate change and sustainability. Coming down on the students on ice and, and um, why do I do it and what does it mean and all those kind of things is these are the people who are going to have to handle some of the things in the future. So you feel that you can have an influence that you might not otherwise have. Taking these students both to the Arctic and to the, the Antarctic, um, they then become, in a sense, uh, messengers. My experience with a lot of these youngsters is they don't just go back and shut up. They go back and, and uh, okay, they're full of wind, right? So what? They, they, they organize things. They, they give talks and, and so on. They engage in conversations with, with their colleagues. So, you know, this idea that one person can't make a difference is nonsense. They can, it, it spreads like a disease almost, you know. They make a lot of difference. Tonight, we'll come down here, and this is where we're gonna go. This is, these are the, called the Wal Walwerman Islands. And Sue says unsurveyed, almost nobody goes here. But over the last number of years with Fritz, we'd sail past here, and Fritz would always be out on deck, and he'd be looking and saying, I really think we should go there one day. Because they're little islands, but they have these what do you call them, Dave? These little uh, pillow ice caps. They're just little small ice caps that form on the islands. They may hold a nice climate record of this part of the Antarctic, which mm. is presumably warming one of the, at one of the fastest rates in the world. Mm. Okay, we got everybody. Let's go. See if we can find this place. So I think in somewhere in here we're gonna find a little channel that we saw when we came here last year that will take us into this little hidden cove and that's gonna be our landing spot. Welcome to uh, an island that's yet to be named as far as we know. <laughs> Come on up and we'll get organized and then uh, head up the glacier. Isn't it great to be up at 5.30? I was excited when the alarm went off at 5 this morning. I was, you saw me, I came down, I was pumping my fist. This is, this is pretty neat. It was pretty neat to see this. I've never seen anything like this. These, these little, little ice caps and I mean it's it's not just the ice either it's uh, as Luke was mentioning each each one of the little ones over here has these lenticular clouds on top of it which is you know the sort of interaction between glacier and climate that is a lot of what we're we're looking at here as well yeah it's so great to be back here it was almost a year ago today that um, uh, Fritz stood right on that rock you guys are on we landed over there and we'd been scoping out these islands to find a spot to land. And this was one of the only islands. We, it was the, just as we were returning to the ship, we found this one. 
So we walked up here and looked up there and said, wouldn't it be cool to go up there <laughs> next year? And here we are. This is like a mini Antarctica, this island, in the sense of how it's formed. It's a neat analogy. So, you guys ready? Yeah. Do some glaciology? <laughs> All right. You guys are really students on ice this morning. One of the one of the things I'm working on as uh, kind of part of my master's is I'm uh, collaborating on a book that Luke is working on that'll be published hopefully later this year uh, on ice shelves and the processes surrounding them. And one day when I was uh, working on a collaboration meeting with one of the other authors on that chapter, she told me that one of the people who was originally going to be working on this book with us was Fritz Kerner. A lot of modern science is from remote sensing, satellite work, and you know, kind of GPS type stuff. And what you can do is to get these scientists, who are just as equally expert that they're, what they're doing is what we did, is to make them keep their feet on the ground. And I think the, the, the Dave Burgess is the scientist taking over from me. And I hope he's learning from me, and I think he is. Um, how to travel around the ice cap and, and do the old-fashioned measurements and which can be used to calibrate the new satellite stuff which he's an expert at. In the middle of May Luke and um, Derek Bueller from Trent University and uh, another girl working in my lab uh, will be going up to northern Ellesmere Island for a month um, and uh, staying in this little place called Purple Valley and doing some work on the ice shelves up there so uh, no rest for the weary. <laughs> I gotta get going again. <laughs> so that's what I feel our place is, is to hand over, you know, but don't forget the past, as it were. Because one of the criticisms of young people is if, if you can't get publications on the internet, then they don't exist, right? And you have to tell them that they do exist and just get away from the computer and go to a library. He was on this trip with us this year. He would have been right up here drilling out that hole and getting some cores and really trying to figure out what's going on with these little mini ice caps. So this is really spectacular to be to be doing that and following in his footsteps. In terms of passing the torch to the students, I think less in terms of them becoming glaciologists like I am, but more in terms of educating them in what the possibilities may be, what the climate may turn into, and where they should direct their attentions to those kind of problems, plus the whole problem of sustainability of the planet. Because we are, I think, at a turning point, and these are the people we're going to have to look after. I tell them it's pretty cynical minded. You know, why do I care? I'll be dead when it gets really bad. But there are the people who are going to have to look after it in the future. There's no doubt about it. And I think they're capable of doing it. This is, this is what's encouraging, given the right information. I think you've made an incredible impact on the world. Um, you've energized an entire group of students to come up to this small group of islands that you just looked out a ship one day and said we should go there and do some do some measurement um, I think that's a really it's a really powerful mark to have left on the world and I hope that I can accomplish something similar it's really inspirational so thank you